as I was saying in the final conclusion, we as Canadians pride ourselves on one major difference between the U.S. We pride ourselves on the fact that we built ourselves as a nation of ideas. The U.S. built themselves on a revolution for freedom of speech and freedom from government and tyranny and oppression. We tried that route. The revolutions got quelled. Not enough people were interested in revolution to fight it. Our government, it was a long struggle, yes, but here's the cool bit. The only thing that revolution did in our country was that it made us aware of a problem. But we dealt with that problem through logic and reason. We set ourselves apart. We eventually became an independent country through discussing and debating. We thrive ourselves based on ideal, based on the on on on, on, an, on an initial value of um, you know on an initial value of being equal, uh, you know of being equal. And the way that we provide our government services, the way that we have socialized medicine, socialized health care, these are not blocks to free trade. These are helps to increase the productivity of workforces and the like. So this way they can generate better products and generate better services and generate even more of the stuff. So this way free trade is possible. So there's more to trade with. You know, so this way there's more trade with. There's more value generated. This is good for a system. You know, this is what allows for a free competitive marketplace. I mean, you know, if, if a government, the, there was a case before the NAFTA board a while back, the North American Free Trade Agreement, where some American corporations pressured the American government to try to get, to try to force us to get rid of our socialized Medicare and stuff like that on the grounds that it was, uh, you know, and, uh, and, and, try, and uh, workplace safety regulations and the like, on the grounds that it was preventing free trade from corporations to act wherever they willed. The Free Trade Board ruled, Canada made the case, and the Free Trade Board ruled that workplace safety and other laws that we have in Canada to prevent, you know, to prevent, um, you know, workplace injury, to, uh, you know, to make sure that, um, you know, Canadian workers have the right to refuse unsafe work, to make sure that Medicare is provided, to make sure that they have the time off to heal, uh, to make sure they have time for their families, to make sure that, you know, that freedom of education is there. All of our social services, all of our socialist leanings, you know, so to speak, if you could call them that, the, the, the Free Trade Board ruled that these were actually beneficial to free trade owing to the fact that the quality of product could still be made without any, you know, uh, the, the, the quality of safety of the workplace meant that the workers could work more efficiently and longer that, you know, that by getting, that, that you could get more work out of the existing workers. So this way it would actually cut costs in having to retrain and the like and would actually be beneficial to free trade in the long run because you would have to put less money in to get better product out. You know, uh, you know, for doing this, it mean you know required a little bit less money in certain areas. It just required a little bit of money in terms of healthcare benefits, as opposed to having to hire and train a whole bunch more workers. You know, it cut costs in a few areas, which was be more beneficial in the long run for trade and for resource distribution all around. Here's another thing: we pride ourselves on our diversity. We pride ourselves on the fact that I am a I am an Aspie Canadian. I can proudly say that, and on top of that, I demand respect. For being, an, for being an Aspie. I can freely state that, and I can go around, and if somebody's being discriminatory against me, I can ask them, you know, and, and if somebody, like an employer, tries to fire me because of the fact that I have a disability, I have a chartered right, I have a right in the Charter of Rights and Freedoms to take that person to court for, sui you know, for a wrongful dismissal owing to my disability. If my disability is a slight in impairment in the workplace because of the fact that their workplace system is already you know, if 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 um you know if my disability is slightly problematic because of the fact that I may be exposing some in, uh, unsafe work practices that they're doing uh you know uh, illegally which are endangering other workers, they can't fire me for that, I, um because of the fact that I am expressing my legal right to help other people's safety, to help other people's freedom to live and you know uh, freedom you know life liberty life liberty in the pursuit of happiness, life life is one of those three. You know, you guys at Americans respect that. Life is one of them. For example, I got fired, and this is illegal. I got fired for having yelled cross-contamination at one point uh, when I was working on soup and sandwich in a fast food restaurant. The person who was working next to me had not wiped their knife after handling peanut butter. And yes, peanut allergies are considerable. So the thing, of course, is though, is that you know there are people who died from peanut allergies going into anaphylactic shock. The regulations clearly state that you know for workplace safety and for food safe, which is required by you know every restaurant in BC, where it's just where I live. This is a provincial thing. And you know this is an extrapolation based off federal uh, work and safety laws that you that you avoid cross contamination between peanut products, you know, or products which could cause life threatening allergies and other products. You you keep them separate. You clean off all knives afterwards. And when I yelled cross contamination because of the fact of a very real health risk, I got fired for it because of the fact that it blackened the name of the restaurant. 
while the person at the time was not doing their job. So I got fired for wrongful dismissal. I also got fired because of the fact that this was also based on my disability. Because of my Asperger's syndrome, I'm likely to shout out a few times. That's various things. And you know what? That too was, again, a discrimination against my disability. Because of my Asperger's and my uh, uh, inability to handle certain things in the workplace, and the reason that I was unable to handle those things was not to make the was not to uh, try to get them to go out of way out of their way to accommodate me, but to allow me enough space to adapt to their workplace procedures. They did not allow me enough time to do so, and I was working reasonably well, uh, you know, getting the product out. They try they you know because despite that fact, they still fired me based on it. It was a wrongful dismissal issue, and I have uh, brought court proceedings forward to uh, said company. I am not uh, going to reveal the name of the company here on YouTube for fear of the fact that they might try to countersue me for libel. Even though the fact that it remains that the uh, performance reviews and everything are true, um, I still don't want to have to deal with the court costs of a countersuit anyway. You know, rhetoric skills, unfortunately, do, st do still play a part in our court system despite, the, uh, despite all, all of our attempts to try to work uh, towards logic. But here's the thing. Canadians... We pride ourselves on the fact that we gained independence, not through revolution, but through honest debate. We gained it in stages. We, yes, it took us a lot longer to gain our independence from, uh, from Great Britain. Yes, it took us a lot longer to become an independent country. But here's the thing. We're, in some cases, the better off for it. We have all the stuff that we do because of the fact that a shrewd politician by the name of Pierre Elliott Trudeau, he was a francophone, a French Canadian, who, uh, you know, um, and French, uh, and as I recall, the French were the ones who came up with, with life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness in the first place. It was Voltaire and other French philosophers who came up with this. This was a French tradition, uh, you know, a man who came up with this. He came up with the Charter of Rights and Freedoms for Canada. He enshrined minorities in there in addition to majorities to make sure that the, that the majority could not, that the minorities could not oppress the majority, but that vice versa could not happen either. You know, he minimized the amount of oppression that any group could have over another. And that includes the, the rule of the majority over minority in a democratic system. He understood the dangers of that. And so he enshrined a few rights in there as a check and balance against the possibility of the majority getting too much power. He prevented the, you know, he, you know, he enshrined. We, we have had enshrined in our system a system of democratic debate, of, of, of negotiations and alliances to prevent oligarchies from trying to over-influence things. Uh, you know, I mean, like, we, we have found ways of exploiting systems that were in place to prevent this sort of crap from happening. We have a long-standing tradition in our government, in our government foundations, of being of reasoning. Uh, you know that every single one of our systems was founded either, uh, you know, was was founded through reason. We gained our independence through that. The only time that we had an amendment was, at, was uh, after rebellions was the government was the British government making amendments to allow more democratic systems of talking to prevent that sort of ha problem from happening again. There was never another rebellion after that. Well, one uh, attempted rebellion that happened in uh, Quebec after that, but it got in 1838, but it got quashed right off the bat by fellow citizens because they didn't see the need for a revolution anymore. In, 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 Easter, in, in Upper Canada, uh, now Ontario, which was Toronto at the time, um, nobody supported the revolution there. Only a, a few 800 people or so did because of the fact that they were, you know, they were unwilling to get involved in an irrational basis. It was an appeal to force fallacy. You know, and for the most part, you know, revolution is not supported in our country. There was once going to be a revolution over the GST. That revolution completely fell apart, owing to the fact that the um, you know owing to the fact that uh, um, that revolution has just not been in our tradition in Canada. We are a reasoning debating society, and we have so many problems in our system that right now reason and debate are going. You know, as a matter of fact, you know I'm a little bit pissed at our system for not going rational enough. I'm even more pissed at the U.S. system for being less rational than us. You know, um, you know I mean like I you know I'm pissed at Canada, but I'm a Canadian patriot because of the fact that we work more so based on logic and rationality. The fact that our very foundations are based on that, 90% of them at any rate. You know, and the fact that, you know, we at least now, now that we have full independence as a far as an independent country, and now, you know, you know, I mean, now that we are, ac now that we actually are an independent country, I mean, yes, we haven't overturned the Indian Act, we've still got a lot that we're working through in terms of crap, you know, trying to clean up the, uh, the, um, the crap of our predecessors, but... At the very least, we at least now have enshrined in our Charter of Rights and Freedoms rights for First Nations people, for Aber you know, for First Nations people, uh, Indians, you probably call them down in the U.S., um, disabled, various other minority groups. Um, you know, the we, the fact that we have all these Charters of Rights and Freedoms, and the fact that our rights end, our individual rights end, where another individual's rights begin, and that also the one instance. Um, we also do have something which may try to trump the Charter on occasion, the War Measures Act, but that the one time that it was ever invoked, rights were instilled immediately afterwards again. 